Hey guys, so I'm trying something new today, and today I'm trying to, I am recording my video, and I'm also live streaming on Twitter. So if you're on Twitter, hi, and if you're watching this on YouTube later, hi, <laughs> again, so if you see my phone, I'm sorry. So today I want to talk about free will. Do we have it? And I think it's common sense that we do have it. And I was watching some videos about it just to see what people were saying, because this is not the first time I've heard arguments against free will. This is... Probably the third or fourth time I've heard it and always in usually it starts usually always in the um, the sector of you know should people go to jail or should there be rehabilitation so <clears throat> my buddy Xiao I think I said that right uh, made an interesting video about free will that I wanted to discuss today because I think it hits all the points that are relevant um, if you have anything to add just let me know down in the comments or at me so the first point made in his video is this snippet of events in Matthew where Jesus is discussing what it means to be righteous with a rich guy. And specifically, Matthew 19.23. And I'll have that on the YouTube video down the perusal for down there. And like, bleh, I can't talk. <laughs> I have it on the YouTube video in the description for your perusal. There we go. <laughs> and my response to this is basically Jesus doesn't care that this guy is rich. Um, he cares that this guy loves his money more than God. And that is a choice the rich man is making. The rich man is not saying, you know, oh, well, um, I did all this stuff. I kept the commandments, so I must be good. But I need to keep my money, too. Or that is what he's saying. He's saying, I need to keep my money, too. And what Jesus is basically saying is, no, give it all up. Make the choice to be for me for all of it and the rich man it is implied that the rich man doesn't make that choice it's implied that he instead walks away sad because he doesn't want to give up his money he's made the choice that money is what is more important to him so the whole point here is that we choose excuse me we choose the world or we can choose God but we can't choose both that in the end is what the what the rich man had to choose to do so it's all about how we make choices and why we make them and so I think that that was interesting it doesn't matter that the guy's rich who cares it's just hey here's this rich guy this rich guy who loves his money is really the point point. and so the next thing that he had was becoming a Christian or changing your mind and basically like how would you do that like how would you know to do that and he has a third one that's how do people realize they need to change or that they have made a mistake and things like that and I think they go together because basically why do we make any changes at all in what we're doing why do we ever do that so my point is is that we only change our minds about anything when we get new information or we have new ideas presented to us or we have experiences that change the way we think about something and the only way that happens is to have experiences and obtain knowledge right and I separate those two because when you have an experience you do obtain knowledge but I separate those two because obtaining knowledge through like a book or talking to somebody is different from an experience like an experience I obtained the knowledge of this experience and I, then I can try and apply it but a book can t teach you or you can gain knowledge more broadly so that's basically what's going on we as people change our minds or we change our actions based on what happens to us with the information that we're given like I did not start out Christian I didn't start out pagan I, I didn't start out anything other than atheist like I didn't really believe in God who cares I, I knew enough to have conversations with people but I didn't actually care about it all that much personally who cares who cares, who cares? right <laughs> who cares um, but what ended up changing my mind is I had experiences with like the supernatural and then I had you know, I didn't think it was bad to uh, hurt people, uh, like, emotionally. Like, I didn't, I was, I always thought, before I was a Christian, I was like, yeah, you'll, you'll get over it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not like I hurt you, hurt you. Like, I, for me, there was a, there was a, this weird distinction that, like, if I hurt your feelings, you'll be over it in a week. If I break your leg, 
that has extenuating um, pain and, and you'll you'll feel that for the rest of your life so for me I made that distinction now, that's an incorrect distinction but I but that is the one I made under atheism and even paganism because those two go hand in hand basically because you have the same basics underneath it. The only thing is you now believe it's possible or that it is more likely that there is a supernatural event that happened to create everything. So for me, that's, that's what happened there is I started to interact with people more <laughs> and that didn't work out. I had no friends, I had no anything. And then I had this one dude kind of talked to me about what it was to be a friend and he used biblical concepts and now I have friends not a whole lot because I just don't want a whole lot but <laughs> you know um being an introvert it's kind of I can't juggle a bunch of people I can do one possibly two and then I'm done so uh where was I going with that? oh I, I got it okay so <clears throat> it changed me these ideas that this guy had it changed me it made me look at myself and go, well, maybe I'm doing this the wrong way. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't do this this way. It's sort of like when you touch your hand to a hot stove, that's an experiential thing where you learn, oh, ow, that freaking hurts. I shouldn't do that again. And I change my mind and don't want to do it again. Right? So it's, it's one of those things. That's why I think we have free will. I think that in order to make the case for having psychologists, for having any of those people, you have to also make the case that change is possible. If change is possible, then we have the will, the free will to change. Otherwise, we it's, you know, what's the point? We might as well just lock everybody up. I think also that SE is a good example of this, right? With this form of evangelism, atheists attempt to create doubt or at least make people think about what they believe and why. If we don't have free will to change that or to at least think about it, what is the point to this? Like, why would we do that? If I can't overcome the way I grew up or the culture I lived in or my experiences, if I can't overcome those things, then why try to change me if I can't be changed? I think this is the same with evangelism and Christianity. We know that people can change. We know that God, the outside catalyst, or the ultimate outside catalyst, can change people. I've been changed ra radically. Like, I don't think I could go back and talk to the person I was 10 years ago, or maybe not, no, hold on, 20 years ago or so, <laughs> and be talking to the same person. You know, I'm not the same. I'm different. I have different views on the world, on people, on everything. So that is how you would change it, and that's why you would change it. Like, you don't, people don't change their mind for no good reason. They change it because there's a reason to change it. They, they see the logic or they see the reason to do that. So, um, so that is what I think. I think that answers both questions. And in the end, he asked the question, well, what if we were there, we chose the wrong one, and all of everything that was working you know, for us, what worked against what we were being told that was new. And I said, and my answer to that is that that is where I have been. I have been there where I'm not a Christian. I'm not a, no, you know, I'm an atheist first. And then I have conversations and that changes. And then I'm a pagan because I have all these supernatural experiences. And then that changes because, excuse me, because then I start reading the Bible because of how this one guy talked to me. So you have to think about all of that. It's not just like you don't know it initially because you act on what you know to be true at the time. But when people come in and evangelize to you, whether it's an atheistic evangelist or a Christian evangelist or whoever, and they give you these new ideas. These are new ideas you can think about and at least try and apply and go from there. I think we all need to be people who are trying to search for truth. I don't think it's, we shouldn't be searching for ideology, but we should be searching for truth. And for me, whenever I did my search for truth, it led to Christianity. And every time I try and discover the truth and what works and what's true, Christianity always has the answer. 
even when it comes to science like Christianity doesn't talk about you know where we all have chromosomes but uh, that all came from one woman what it does say is that we that we all came from one woman Eve right and then science goes and finds mitochondrial Eve where we scientifically are all from one woman all right so for me that science a lot of times backs up the Bible just from the stuff that they find so guys that's how I wanted to talk about that free will we all have this free will we're all responsible for what we do we all have things that we need to open up and learn about we all need to take some take time and say okay this is what I believe about this but why do I believe this and what is going on and you know does this really fit with what I see in the world and and all this other stuff we all need to do that so I would encourage you today not only to read your Bible but go out and see what's going on in the world try and see if you can take the two and go oh well, this matches this or this doesn't match this what does this mean what I think it means does it not and really open ourselves up and discover what is going on <laughs> discover truth not ideology and that's what I would say all right guys until next time I will see you hopefully tomorrow I'm gonna try this year one of my resolutions is to do this every day so we'll see all right bye